Right stitch switching. People think they can just begin right stitch switching in the defence and then all of a sudden be MS Dossery with the defence. If they don't start being MS Dossery with the defence after they start right stitch switching, then they get disappointed. They think, what is even the point? They revert back to their old defending skull of L1. Lads, I'm about to break down for you in this video the five stages of right stitch switching that you guys need to obviously progressively start to master to get up to that level of MS Dossa repressing and right stitch switching. I'm about to break it down for you. Griezmann, three men around him to somehow find some space. Ronaldo, fantastic opening the drive back. He's made himself the tiniest bit of space. It almost feels like a bit of a toy. Didn't really go for him. Oh! The display there is absolutely ridiculous. The elastico on the goal line. First of all, right stitch switching. What is it? Right stitch switching is basically you selecting the defender that you want with the right stick. The trouble is, if you just use L1 switching, what happens is when you tap it, it selects the player who is closest to the ball. So the ball is close, constantly moving, which means you will always have a defender that's near the ball, and when you tap L1, it will switch to that defender. The trouble is, if there is a runner making a run, if you want to press an opponent, if you want to control multiple defenders at once, if you want to reposition a defender, they are not always the defenders that are closest to the ball. So the trouble is, if you continue to use L1 switching, it won't allow you to control all of your defenders when it is necessary. So right stick switching is very necessary. Every single pro player in FIFA, in the history of FIFA, since right stick switching was a thing, has used this concept of switching and it is much more necessary than a lot of people think. The first stage of right stick switching is of course lads, you getting used to the actual angles of the right stick. This is something that will take you practice. When you get the angles of the right stick, it will become a lot more easier to start implementing the next four stages that I am about to break down for you. How do you get the angles for right stick switching? The best way I find for my clients in the coaching academy, as well as myself back in the day when I was starting to learn, is to go off and to kick off and basically just select the defenders that you want with the right stick. Start flicking the right stick to the direction of the defenders that you want. Okay, and what this means is you don't use L1 switching, you just use right stick switching, you're flicking the right stick, and you know, if I'm playing kickoff and I want the left back, and I control the right CDM. Okay, well, if I want the left back, let's do it. So flick, flick, and that will get me to the left back. Sometimes you might miss, click it, and I might go to the left wing, might go to the left center back. That's when you need to restart. You just need to continue getting the angles down pat with the right stick to basically flick it in the right direction. The next stage is implementing it into your game. Now, what I actually recommend to a lot of clients in my academy, and I say to them, look, if you lose the next month, I do not care. Because you losing in the next month is a short-term loss for a long-term game. Because if you just go to tell yourself, okay, well, I'm gonna go into this online game, and I'm going to right seat switch, I don't care if I lose, okay, whether it's division rivals, whether it's foot champs, whatever it is, go into that game mode, use right stick switching and nothing else. Once you've at least got the angles down pat, like I told you in stage one. And what this will do is it will force you to start selecting defenders with the right stick. Very, very important. Third stage I find, lads, which is best going to allow you to start implementing this into your game is tracking runs with the right stick. So, what I mean by that is, every single run that you see by your opponent, you want to track it. And the way you track it is you flick to the defender who is closest to that attacker. And that is with the right stick, of course. And you want to run alongside them to track the run. The trouble is though, people think, okay, I'm tracking the run, what do I do now on the player on the ball? People don't realize, but they can use second man press as they're tracking that run. And that's very, very important. Not allowing the player on the ball too much time, but also tracking the run at the same time. It's doing two things at the same time, which is super, super important. So track the run by flicking the right stick to the defender closest to the attacker making the run. And then what you want to do is you want to hold R1 to second man press the player on the ball. And once that defender who is in the midfield pressing the player on the ball gets close 
to that attacker on the ball, then you can actually use L1 in this situation to select that defender who is closest to the player on the ball. And then you can make that tackle as he gets close to him. Fourth stage, lads, is actually to a point where you can start and select any player that you want without even using L1 switching. This is how I personally defend. Now, although I say that, I will sometimes need to use L1 to refresh the player that I've selected. What I mean by that is if you miss select a defender and you're not sure which defender you've selected, tap L1 just to refresh, restart, and then start the right stick switching again. But what I'm trying to say is in stage four of right stick switching, you want to get to the point where basically you can select any player you want. Whether you're in the bots and there's players quite congested, you still need to get those angles down pat. You still need to select defenders quite quickly. Or whether it's just when you're trying to basically, you know, select a defender as the player is switching the ball, as the attacker, as your opponent is switching the ball, and you want to, you know, anticipate the flow of the play with that. This is very, very important. And what this allows us to do is press the opponent, like I was saying, like MS Dossery. And basically, lads, this is a very, very advanced way of pressing in FIFA 22. It's how I personally press. I've personally adapted the pressing style of MS Dossery because it's one of the best in the world at it. And basically, the way you do that is by right stick switching every single player at once to position them. All right, so you're controlling multiple defenders at once and using right stick switching to do that and also using second man press to do that. So you're using second man press to you know run a defender up towards a player on the ball, then flicking off him with a right stick, then running him up, then flicking to another defender and just congesting them. And I like to say the analogy, putting a plastic bag over their head and then basically suffocating them. That's what you want to do in these cases of defending, okay? And it's very, very crucial, lads, that you get it down pat. Whether you're in the 18-yard box and you need to select a defender quite close to the player that you already have selected of, or whether it's from a, a defender who's quite far away. This is stage four. Stage five, lads. It's very advanced. I went over defending tutorial on this uh, just the other day, actually. And basically, that is anticipating the flow of the play. People, they'll get right stick switching down pat. They'll be able to get the angles down pat. They can track runs. They can press the opponent with multiple defenders at once. They're quite good at it. What the next stage is, is anticipating the flow of the play with right stick switching. What I mean by that is you reading the flow of the play that your opponent is about to go. So whether he's going to switch the ball or whether he's going to pass into a midfielder, you reading that and right stick switching to the defender before he even makes that play, okay? And this is something that comes with experience. It comes with practice and it comes with years and years and years of using right stick switching and that's exactly why i'm trying to tell you guys use right stick switching in fifa it's going to benefit you in fifa 23 in eafc whatever the game is going to be it's going to benefit you guys because it is one of the most important aspects of defending and player selecting in fifa 22 and beyond but they are the five stages or the five levels of right stick switching lads and in general they go from beginner to advanced and that is basically from day one that you start to use right stick switching to year five of right stick switching. It's something that takes a long time to master but once you master it lads your defense will be tenfold better in my opinion and it's not in my opinion it's just in general fact okay it's 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 fact all right but that will sing at the end of it i hope you enjoyed it follow me on instagram lads i'm showing my progression of the no money spent road to event on there and that's a series basically where i show the ins and outs of what it takes to make an esport event whether it's diet gym or of course fifa as well and uh, i'm coaching one-on-one -on, -one on patreon.com if you want me to actually coach you personally and get you towards that stage five of right stick twitching a lot quicker then join the academy lads I can help you out over there and uh yeah as always i hope you have a good day i'm out sign au revoir adios salam ciao goodbye